Jesus says, Your beauty is marvelous. You're becoming little Christs. May 15, 2016 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Claire began, My precious heart dwellers, His grace is sufficient for us. His power is perfected in our weakness. Hold on to these words of truth, for truly the heat of the battle is upon us. These have been some of the most difficult days since we began our channel. There have been days filled with problems, sorrows, challenges brought on by those who hate Jesus and all he is and stands for. Yes, the enemies of the cross have loaded more suffering upon our backs with a greater release of evil than we have ever seen. And what do I have to say to our enemies? I want to thank you all for through your hard work we are being taught wonderful and glorious things about the Kingdom of God and through His power and grace we are rising above all opposition. Dearest Jesus, my heart is so heavy because so many are suffering over this channel and I have been unfaithful in prayer today. Please forgive me, Lord, and lift our spirits back up off the floor and help us make sound decisions. Jesus began, Claire, I'm right here by your side, suffering with you. It's not any easier for me to see you suffering because I suffer with you, my dearest. Yes, these are hard times, but if you knew the glorious harvest that is coming to me because of your sufferings, you would ask me to increase it a hundredfold. Oh Lord, I couldn't. I'm just too weak. There's no way I could ask you to increase it. And yet I have increased it over and over again since this channel came into being and I told you you are going behind enemy lines and I gave you the vision of you parachuting down into their jungles but you do not see the growth it has wrought in you or the souls that are now hearing me clearly because of all of you and your team willingly suffered for me Well done, my good and faithful servants. Soon you will enter into your master's joy. But until then, continue to ask for more strength, because my grace will not fail you if you keep going. I will keep pouring grace after grace after grace upon you, through you and in you. Now in heaven, there are mountains of graces being distributed because of the maturity and dedication of your team. I've handpicked every one of them. I have armed them and assigned legions of angels to them. And every day I instruct them. There are three scripture passages I would like you to keep in front of you constantly as we approach the day and hour of your liberation. The first one is from Matthew 25, 4-6. It talks about the foolish virgins, but the wise ones took oil in flasks along with their lamps. The bridegroom was delayed. They all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry went out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. The second one is from 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. That is why for the sake of Christ I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, 
in difficulties, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And the third one comes from John 16.33. You see, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, and so will you. As it is written, I've told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I've overcome the world. So, break it down this way. The bridegroom was delayed, but my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Take courage, I have overcome the world. Timing plays a major part in this. You will all notice how much you have grown in anticipation for my coming. This is quite deliberate on my part. When a woman is to give birth, at some point she must start pushing. If the child is posterior, that is face up instead of face down, the pushing is quite difficult and yields little results. Therefore, the midwife must say continually, just one more push, one more push, push. With your first child you remember well the agonies of that 12-hour push. You see, my church is giving birth to souls, and each new labor pain brings with it another push. And the birth is difficult, so you continue to push and push. Just when you feel you can't manage one more push, I breathe my grace into you, and you continue to push. One of these moments, your pushing will be at an end, and the child will be born. In the meantime, you are going from glory to glory. By the generosity of those who hate me and hate you, your so-called enemies, you are not only learning the ways of the Dark Ones and broadcasting what you have learned around the world to those who need to hear it, you are also growing in spiritual power and stature. You are literally rising to the occasion. They don't realize they're actually facilitating a classroom where you are coming into great power and glory. I'm using them. They think they are doing you harm, but quite the contrary is happening. They are serving me well in raising up my body in glory. Soon enough the tables will turn and they will suffer major defeats because they are the ones who helped teach you how to rise up and fight. Iron sharpens iron. And their master does not care for their future. He looks forward to the day when he can finally reveal to them they've been had and their kingdom is the fire that never abates and the warm that is never satisfied. So you see, you are growing, you are reaping a harvest, you are shining, my brides. You're becoming all I've called you to be, even as it is written in James 1, 2-4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Do you know what not lacking anything means? It means you are approaching perfection and the perfect reflection of your Creator. You are rising to the full stature of Christ, even as that is written, and He Himself has given some as emissaries, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as shepherds and teachers, that the saints might be prepared for the work of ministry. By this the body of Christ is to be edified, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to the perfect man, to the full measure of the stature of Christ. That's Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. So, break it down this way so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything, 
as you mature to the fullness of the stature of Christ. You are becoming little Christs, and soon you will arise, my brides, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Yes, you will be purified and stunning, arising in glory, where all of heaven will rise up to greet you in great majesty, for your struggles and victories have been innumerable. Therefore put behind you the toil and pain of each day, and looking forward, behold the glory and majesty of your adornments as you come to greet your spouse. Arise, my brides! You are the victor in these battles, and you will be bedecked in jewel-embedded bridal gowns, reflecting the transforming power of the graces you have so readily accepted and corresponded to. Your beauty is marvelous to behold. Do not be detained by the soiled garments of the past. Rather look beneath your feet. The enemy is clothed in rags, which will soon be consumed by the fire. I bless you now with endurance and love that you may run the race to the finish line and receive your glorious crown.